I have on the bench here two circuit boards. This one on the right doesn't work and this one on the left works flawlessly. They are both circuit boards from a KitchenAid Professional 6 quart kitchen mixer. In this video I'm trying to find out what's wrong with the non-working one by using the ideas and design concepts from the working circuit board. The two circuit boards are maybe 10-20 years apart and the redesigned circuit board doesn't nearly have as much electrical components as the old one does. So my comparison will be limited to the items that are identical on both circuit board designs. So I have this rig, big rig, not red, big capacitor on one, big capacitor on the other one, this tower repeats here, the heat sink with that uh, transistor repeats on both of them, this pink resistor is the same as the pink resistor there, uh, the, the three prong connector is the same and in the same location, but most of these resistors and capacitors and this long rectangular unit just doesn't repeat on the other circuit board. So I'm uh, I'm gonna be a little limited with my investigation here however I do have a number of components that are identical and that repeat so I start with removing the four mounted mounting screws from these four holes and the screws are over here I just got them out of sight here in the corner of the picture here when the four screws are removed the slider and this mounting plate totally separates from the circuit board and before I can do any kind of electrical checks checking with a with a tester checking resistance and uh, capacitance and whatever else I can and continuity I I want to concentrate my my uh, strategy here on this slider here this slider switch it's not really a switch, it's a resistor, it's a variable resistor, uh, a, a rheostat or a potentiometer. This might have some dirt in it or might be clogged or, or dirty and I will want to clean this one first before much anything else. As well as there is a switch, there's a... you can hear it clicking. All right, there's a switch there. When the slider is in the off position, this plastic white tab activates this switch. So I will get into the switch somehow and I will clean the surfaces inside somehow. First with compressed air and then I will I'll figure out something, I'll, I'll clean it inside and I'll let you know what worked, okay? Because I suspect and I hope they only need a clean up inside and I hope it's just gonna work after that. Everything else is solid state, there are no moving components inside. The most likely culprit is this uh, slider here and that switch that they uh, get clogged up over the years. On the new board we have the same slider mechanism there with the same uh, rectangle on it. You can see the same design, the same rectangle repeats and uh, we've got the same switch there, that black switch and, uh, and when this slider is in the off position that switch works the same way. The tab on the switch is being depressed by a white tab that slides here. All right. So that's uh, that's an item that is uh, or a concept that's the same on the new circuit board as it is on the old one. So I'll get to cleaning and I'll tell you about it. But just before we get uh, carried away with mad cleanup, let's take a couple of observations here. This switch is riveted. The, that little 
round item in the middle that's a rivet it doesn't come apart easily and I am not ready to rivet it back together just yet so I'm gonna start with this uh, potentiometer here but it looks clean it doesn't seem to be the, the track inside with the, those copper plates segmented copper plates they don't seem to be massively covered with inches of gunk on it however I will clean it uh, it's uh, it's segmented how, how this one how this one works is that those segmented copper plates correspond to the distances on the dimples on the side the dimples on the side this hold the slider in the off position in the stir position speed 2 there's one position there between there's 3 speed 4 okay you get the idea that's what those dimples are the side of the slider must have a follower that goes into the dimples where it stops positively okay so that's what these dimples are on the side and you can see the same dimpling on the on the inside of the box as well this box is not the electronics part the, the 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 part is the segmented copper plates and one more observation about this is that this is flexible how do i do this this push button goes down a little bit because what this slider does it connects the copper segmented copper plates on one side to the non-segmented copper plate on the other side okay so that's non-segmented you can see two grooves on it one running there and another groove or some kind of wear mark running on the segmented side as well so on the underside of this slider there must be two spring-loaded copper contact points that always make positive contact all right so I'm uh, that's uh, that's to keep in mind that if you key if you clean the segmented copper track and the non segmented one you still haven't cleaned the contacts on the underside of the slider other than that this metal body comes off the circuit board fairly easily you can see these tabs here that's how it was mounted, it wasn't soldered in place it's got these tabs coming through the board and uh, twist the, the tabs into straight position and it will come away from the circuit board what's soldered in place is the copper plates on the underside Okay, that's where you can see these, these ziggy lines uh, going inside the circuit board All right this metal box is not soldered in place it might be glued a little bit I see a little bit of gluing there but well, we don't have really good light for it but I can see some glue in there at the end uh, may or may not be glued all around I, I don't think so alright so first I'm gonna clean it if it still doesn't work then I'm gonna have to take it apart and clean the underside of this one as well after cleaning the exposed half of this potentiometer on the circuit board I mounted the old circuit board on the unit and left it out overnight the next morning I got up started shooting a video and about 10 seconds into it an interesting thing happened it doesn't work it's been tagged out of service and written off it's got an electrical problem it just doesn't seem to work now that's strange yeah that's strange all right that the circuit board is open one day and then it's closed and fully functional the other day so what has changed other than i cleaned half the potentiometer i started thinking about the part of the day and temperature I came across an interesting observation 
when the circuit board is cold then and this is the old circuit board that wasn't working at room temperature it does work when it's cold so we have some kind of an electrical contact issue let me just get you on this tripod here let's see motor and then the other motor and maybe hold it in place with one screw uh, I also noticed that it got condensation on the circuit but Now it works. Very interesting. And strangely, the net effect of freezing is that now everything works on it at room temperature. So, I'm not sure how much good I did with the actual cleaning and how much good I did with the part having uh, been frozen for a number of hours but the new circuit board with its cute little new knob and its newly redesigned circuitry yeah $35 good to go back into its box and uh, I'm not gonna return it just yet but the mixer is just seems to be fixed as is so it's either the cleanup or the freezing but uh, bottom line this one works